OK. Uh, 8.52. Let's turn our attention to the Premier League and uh, some quick questions about uh, what we think is going to happen over the next while. So, the Premier League, what? I need you to get your crystal ball out, Kenny. Rewind. Let's rewind. What are we talking about? England, Premier, what? Man United, Man Yeah, I'm with you now. So, uh, relegation, right? I want you to... I'm literally... It seems as if it's like six months ago since the last we last covered a Premier League game. Mm. It's funny, isn't it? That international break and maybe a little bit of kind of emotion where we are with the the team and the soul kind of consuming, isn't it? You should do it it's previously on the back. Premier League. It's difficult to come out of it. It's difficult to come out of it and park it. And so, right, let's get back on to I, Premiership Julian. You know, I, I hope that that's a good thing in the long run if, if they can continue in the direction they're going and they've turned things around then I, I think that the fact that it matters so much now because there was definitely international breaks it, it, it was it was yeah. it was creeping in like you'd be on your phone for most of the match flicking 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 oh we've we've got another corner they've yeah. got another corner like, people weren't getting excited Joe were they like talking when the game's coming up you'd be talking about a buzz tickets were but the whole shebang be buzz that bit of buzz around the games I'm sure you know I'm sure I remember that that hasn't been the case, like you know what I mean. Like I said, for some time. And maybe, maybe Kenny's critics have done a bit of a favour in kind of getting the crowd behind them. Like they, they feel kind of, they feel a bit of ownership over him. They feel a bit of ownership of the team. And the team, if they can come through that, and the signs are relatively positive at the moment, they're definitely not through it. I don't think it's over. Yet. It's more about it's not simple. It's not. It's more about the Kenny for the Kenny fans. A bit of Kenny fans same with any any manager. You know what I mean? To have a support. It feels like it's the, about the that. Crowds. It's about that group, and maybe not naturally, may naturally gravitate towards Stephen uh, and the staff and, and get. Behind behind them or, or potentially bringing those people all on board not because I'm now I'm a Stephen Kenny fan but do you know what forget about the manager I actually enjoy what I'm seeing on the yeah, pitch yeah. Um, the football like, that we're producing there's, and there's enough excitement in the players like in in the performances that they're, that they're putting out there and even the backstory of some of them you're kind of we're yeah. falling in love with this team I think. yeah I think you're right yeah the young players as well even like Nathan Collins I, I checked that last night kind of working on the game I played with his dad uh, Dave right. Collins played schoolboy football in Dublin and Dave played for Cherry Orchard he went to England when he was young he signed for Liverpool uh, had his career and, and kind of uh, uh, came back so again seeing his young young fellow on the pitch last night and actually when the game was over uh, I saw Nathan go over and, and try to celebrate to an extent as best you can with we'll some family in the stand and his, Dave, his, his dad was there to recognise me and Pat Fenlon were, were, uh, were looking down and we could see him down there and he was obviously very emotionally effective his dad so that was a lovely touch you know what I mean so it's, it's things like that you, you know you kind of recognise you feel almost not a part of it like you know what I mean you are a part a of it distance. captain this team no but you have a distance yeah. like you know I, this, this, is, this was the beauty of, of Irish international football for me you f- Felt as if you had a relate a relationship with people from a distance. You knew him. Oh yeah, you know his ma used to. Yeah, that's his brother who lives there. He lives down the road. That's a good friend of his. You know what I mean? There's a close personal not per, close personal relationship, but it fe- always felt as if the team was closer. You know what I mean? Yeah. In terms of that kind of bond between supporters and and players for that reason. So little things like that, like last night for me, kind of. You know, makes them more special. We uh, we did a piece a couple of weeks ago about the walking tour that t- starts in Croke Park and finishes in Dalymount. I don't know if you've ever been on it, but they stop off along the way. I think it, at your one of your gaffs when you were a kid, uh, and it's kind of that conversation about one of me gaffs. We weren't like pro- big property investors, you know. <laughs> I mean, my mom, me dad, we didn't have any property around Dublin. We used to just flip from one to the other. Well, I don't know where you live, so I wasn't oh, sure if you'd like, moved or not. You used to flip a little bit. That would have been car- getting into the old car park um, house. The uh, and and the amount of footballers who live between or who grew up in that area, like I can see why it feels like it's a community thing. You know, you kind of come from an area which was a hotbed of Irish football. It hasn't really been talked about like that. Yeah, that, yes, I never really thought of it that way, to be honest, which you're probably right. You throw a blanket around maybe that part of the dome, but it's bigger than that, really, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's it's bigger. It's it's kind of, it's it's across the whole island, isn't it? The repre- representation which we have, uh, uh, Cork, uh, Cork players in now particular, it is, yeah. and Kerry, uh, yeah. and all over. And now you're talking about it, yeah, exactly players now who are not necessarily born in the country. Uh, Teodosi Ogbonne, he's a very interesting story there in terms of his family coming and settling in Ireland. I was a very nice, uh, read the article about him, obviously kind of grew up and uh, very close to the community down in Cork for obvious reasons that's that's where he grew up that's all he's known but his daddy was saying had the option of actually moving the family from Nigeria to Ireland or Florida in the United States and he made the choice to go to Ireland and the reason was he worked with a number of Irish people uh, in, in his work and had a really kind of right. positive experience with them and they kind of, that made his mind up for him well this is what this is the environment where I want my family my child 
to grow up in so that was a kind of really nice touch and a little backstory there that you're talking about i think people feed off that a little bit in terms of making that connection uh with the squad as well jerry just little small things like that i think make it, a big difference it all it all adds up and it all matters and it all makes the team um really interesting at the moment and i can't crossed. believe those uh monster lads are too happy wearing that uh Leinster the jersey is it going to be an issue <laughs> it's going to be an issue with that maybe it can unite going, us going forward it's going to bring us all together also, it's got to be also red maybe it's got, uh, well, that's you know Monster red Connacht. That we, we what's Connacht, quite... Connacht is that blue is that blue Connacht blue well Connacht's green I, that's the Connacht green is yeah. the tradition oh, all right. well, maybe that's it like once we put on the the the, the Ulster colours the IFA will just disband right now and say take all our players <laughs> you can have them and we've opened a can of worms. Let's get back to the Premier League can of worms. Uh, who's going to get relegated, Kenny? Give me a... a, a, a oh, dear, come on. Are we struggling for time? No, no, we're not. We're not. We're not. You need a filler, is that what it is? Not at all, it's the opposite. The, the, people, are, people are like... Ah, uh, who's what? Name them. Newcastle Name United. check them. Who, who's, who's tweeted in this morning? I'm desperately need you to talk about the bottom train of the Premiership. We're going to get relegated, Jer, please. Well, OK, well then we'll skip Pen, the relegation. Kenny down on that. Let's skip the relegation. Are, so are, none, obviously. None, obviously, from what you're saying. Are Newcastle going to get relegated? Um, I don't, but that that's dependent, Jared, isn't it? Because the talk about Steve Bruce being out the door in a, uh, in a couple of weeks or an hour, you know? so or that's two, gonna yeah. that's gonna yeah, yeah it's, that's gonna have that's gonna be a huge factor. You know, he goes out and Antonio Conte comes in the next couple of weeks. I mean, I think that's gonna be a factor in terms of whether Newcastle are gonna stay up or not. You know, whether you know 100, 200 million becomes available in the uh, January transfer window. I think it's going to be significant, relevant in terms of where yeah. Newcastle stay up. They can spend 190 apparently. Just trying to make a point to you. Still, yeah, just, still trying, just trying to make a point to you. I get, I get, I get the point you're making, but yeah. it's actually, it's almost bang on in terms of the amount of money they might spend. Um, they've got to, they've got to go crazy in the transfer window to make sure they don't get relegated. But if you go too crazy... Yeah, exactly. No, I think that's dangerous. I think that's a dangerous thing. I think ideally, if you're looking at it, um, should you change them? I'm not saying you shouldn't uh, uh, change the manager to be honest with you um, there's an argument there for terms of stabilisation keep the manager in place he understands the players without he's worked with them and maybe giving him responsibility to add to that in the transfer we're not a huge sum of money maybe two or three players in key areas of the pitch yeah. in that transfer window maybe that's a better argument in terms of them staying up this year rather than making that out you go there's 10 million off you go give him 10 million Conte. bonus for keeping the team in the Premier League give him 100 million to spend and go just keep us in the Premier League that's all you have to do and at the end of the summer you can go off and we'll get Brendan yeah, I, th- I, th- yeah I, th- I think there's an argument for that that may well be the case we'll wait and see yeah I think they're going to shoot him though because that's uh, that's when new, new business comes in and goes ah oh, this is ours we're going to take it we want to play with these things I've got new toys uh, so I'd, I'd be interested not too to many though who's, 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 who'd you put in there then if you're a Newcastle supporter at the moment who Rogers is favourite. Brendan Rogers. Yeah. Well, he's he's not going to jump. He's, he's not going to jump from Leicester at the moment. Maybe end of the sea, but he's not foolish enough. Brendan Rogers for me is someone who very much in terms of uh, image, how his perception, how he's uh, viewed in that respect. For him to jump, which which what he'd have to do, he'd have to fight his way out of Leicester. City. He'd have to go and destroy Garden Jew. That's very messy. Not too many top managers would like to go down that, that particular route so the for only, me, the nobody only, in a job I can't say anybody in a job I, I, so I, I think you're right about that, that but the only thing about Brendan Rodgers is how many jobs are there going to be that he is in the reckoning for so he's had the Liverpool job he's not getting that again and because he's had the Liverpool job he's not getting the Man United job after that how is he going to he might get the Chelsea job at some point yeah, I, yeah, I agree with you. To the club. I agree with you. I get a sense down on Brendan Rodgers too well, but I get a, a feeling looking at Brendan Rodgers, somebody really kind of ambitious and motivated and wants to operate at a higher level than yeah. uh, Leicester and feels as if he's he's good enough. And I think you're right, his options will be limited in that respect. I just even think potentially he can think he can go uh, abroad. But in terms of what's available within the Premiership, I think you're right. Arsenal and Chelsea, you could make an argument. It, totally it's Arsenal. Hot, but in terms of where Leicester are in a good place at the moment, yeah. you know what I mean? So he really feels if you're going to make that jump up. Can I just ask? Though, so if we go through those, right? So the Chelsea job, unfortunately, Tuchel has done a great job. If, yeah. you're, if you're like advising Rogers at the moment, Tuchel's done a great job. He ain't going anywhere for at least eighteen months. He's probably got eighteen months of a window. And that's change a, quickly though, you know. It, Chelsea can, being it, Chelsea though, it yeah, can, it can, it can change. I don't think, he, I think like, that it's an option. Rogers' stock could also be damaged as well in that yeah. time, and I mean they haven't started the season well. Just put it to you. Let me go through the yeah, so Spurs. Are you gonna? Uh, will you go? You go, Daniel Levy? No, thanks. For Brendan Rodgers, I want to sign this player. I want to sign this player. Leave you like no. I want to sell this player. No, you can't because I like him. Not gonna, not gonna be a great fit. Yeah. Arsenal. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. He could definitely get the Arsenal job, but maybe Arteta's turned that round. Um. 
which kind of makes Newcastle all of a sudden like stand alone though forget about the rule book when it comes this is this is unprecedented really is in terms of what's going to happen uh, with new uh, with Newcastle people are like was Newcastle stepped down look where they are Leicester in a very good place but the potential there to step into that football club yeah, and that's absolutely why you, you know what I mean you have to be thinking same about the amount of investment that's going to be behind that must be attractive for any kind of uh, manager of any stature so I think you're right I think Rodgers will be looking at that and if he's got an inclination of phone call from somebody an agent look are you interested in this job I think the answer would be yes I'm interested but we need to park this till the end of the season yeah yeah you can have me but we need to do this at the start of the season and if they say it's now and everybody I don't think you will Okay. I don't, unless unless Leicester City were prepared to accommodate him and say, well, absolutely, Brendan, we'll allow you to walk out the football 50 club. million quid. That, that type of, yeah, potentially. Potentially. And Brendan's going, oh, I don't really want to go, you know, but, you know, I've spoken to the chairman. He, mm. you know, he's accepted, they had he's they accepted the 50 use. million. You know, I don't understand in the Leicester. If they want me to move on, I'll do the decent thing. I'll, I'll the thing, the, the, the best case scenario for Rogers here is to kind of see how things play out over the next little while. And in around March or April, announced that he's leaving Leicester for Newcastle United, knowing that he's going to be managing a team in the Premier League with a big kitty in the summer, rather than going there now and being like, oh crap, this playing group is not good enough to stay in the Premier League. Yeah. Well, can I just put to you, second favourite, it's Frank Lampard. Yeah, I wouldn't rule him out. I don't think it's helped. Obviously, things ended very quickly uh, for him at Chelsea, but I had a bit of sympathy uh, for him, to be honest. Which I personally would have stuck with him for a longer period of time. Well, I like Lampard, to, to be honest with you. Always struck me as somebody like uh, very uh, astute, intelligent. I'm talking about football intelligence here more so than anything else. So I actually, I actually value him quite highly, and I think he'll actually will come back into the game. I'm not too sure. If I was looking at somebody of that ilk, for me, it's probably Gerard gets the nod over Lampard now Lampard's out of a job at the moment but I was looking at those two players at the moment me from Gerrard's the one I'd, I'd lean towards uh, with those particular two type of players if that's what you were after but I just think of you know the amount of investment they're going to put into that football club you would just feel as if Gerrard not too oh, inexperienced for yeah, but this is what I'm saying you would imagine the chit chat the advice that they're getting the owners of that uh, uh, football club uh, if they have owners it's a personal inv- you know Wells Fund it's not actual links to the uh, as we know but whoever, whoever those people are Amanda Stavely or whoever it is who's up front you would have thought the voice they're getting we need someone of real experience stature here somebody we can trust you know won't get knocked sideways in terms of the, the, the amount of work that needs to be done here Yeah. so yeah that lends itself more to a different a different type of manager but yeah I, I find it difficult at the moment to see you know Conte's out of a job and I'm a huge fan uh, of Conte, but I'm I'm not too I'm not too sure. I think they, they I think they, they might well have to park it till the end of the season. Yeah. But I think P- Poch could get sacked by PSG before then or yeah. something like some, like crazy things are gonna no, happen. things can change very quickly. We know what it's like manager turnover in that short uh, period of time. But I think you're right with Rogers and I think he's very astute Brendan Robert uh, Rogers. I think he's gonna have a difficult season at Leicester. I thought that before the season started. I thought it was a great op- window of opportunity in the past two seasons. Yeah and then in terms of that jump at the Champions mm-hmm. League and they came up short. They kinda of blew it to be honest with you yeah. last couple of months uh, of the season. This is gonna be more uh, difficult uh, for them. So I think maybe his standard will have dropped a little bit by the end of it, uh, this year not as easy for him to make that bounce one of those top clubs mm. that we're talking about so maybe New- Newcastle might be the next best vehicle for him to go and build something and build a team that can actually challenge for Champions League football that might be the better option a funny way for him if he wants to I want to manage in the Champions League uh, consistently Newcastle may-, may be the better option for him wa- rather than fingers crossed waiting for that potential job at Chelsea to come along over the next couple of years um, okay, very quickly. Uh, rate these teams' survival chances out of ten. Oh, Are they going to survive? Dog with a bomb, dog Seven with a bomb. Game gone. So Norwich City, survival chances out of ten. Presumably it's one out of ten, two out of ten. Minimal. Zero. Okay. One. One. Newcastle. Never, never. Newcastle. Yeah, I'd say four. Ooh, you still think, think the forwards were same argument uh, lastly. Just feels if they can get the forward Callum uh, Wilson on the pitch, mm. Alan say say Maximin Almer and those type of players. Just feels if they three. got enough goals in them get themselves out of trouble. Four out of ten means you don't think they're going to survive. So you do think they, you think they will survive. Oh, you didn't stipulate that. You just asked me for marks, <laughs> out, marks out of ten. Rate the team's survival chances out of ten. Ten you out think, of ten means they're going to survive. Well, more likely than it it's, is. A bad, it's a bad formula. It's a bad formula you've got there. Well, F- surely if you think one must really mean they're definitely going to go down. What about if I go put three and not? You get three teams not. That, that means then one doesn't go down. Is that the argument? No, no. You, you don't understand what you're saying. Okay. Well, when you just leave it, are they going to go down or not? Rather than okay, the okay, mar- okay. marking system of one to ten, it's just confused, just muddy in the waters. Easier, easier for us to sell on social. What? <laughs> um, okay, so Norwich are going to go down. Who else is going to go down? Burnley, Southampton, Leeds, Watford, Palace. Anybody else getting dragged in? Villa, Brentford, Brighton. They're not going to get dragged in. No, 
no, I think what's happened at Villa is actually extraordinary, to be honest, which is one of the sides I really... Oh, your team actually didn't, wasn't saying that for that reason. No, really exciting team they're putting together up there. So, no, I don't think they'll have uh, any worries uh, whatsoever. Yeah, same old faces. Same old faces. Kind of half a dozen that you mentioned there. But like I said, I think it is depending what happens to be now at the end of the season. Transfer window, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But, yeah, it will be those teams. No, that doesn't help you. That's not the punch you were looking for. But. Okay, let's try this one again. Then. <laughs> Who's going to win the Premiership? No, okay. <laughs> so original one. We're going to look at because the transfer window is about to. The speculation certainly is going to ramp up immediately. It already has, but there's some of the big transfers that have already been made. Give us uh, marks out of ten for these, right? Oh, Grealish to City. Yeah, I'll give him. A, I'll give him a seven. I'll give him a three at the weekend, but I blame the manager for that because he made that ludicrous decision again to throw him in as that false number nine I just don't understand it I really don't he looked totally he looked uncomfortable in the position in terms of his you know positional sense areas to pick up he was struggling to get into the game he was kind of wandering around the pitch for me Grealish but for, yeah you play him left with threes he has done predominantly you find, it, find a, a deeper midfield position for him so I don't think he was actually helped the, the previous game against Liverpool I thought his manager actually hung him out a little bit in the game against Liverpool, but I'm a huge fan of him. I'd have to say that. Is there? Is there? Go on. So what I was going to say, he needs to pick up the phone to his former Republic of Ireland teammate Callum Robinson and say, "Listen, Callum, how have you managed to adapt from a wide player to, to a goal scoring central player?" I, I suppose that'd be my point. He has to adapt mm. to playing that position. But why? He's got players where Guardiola best suits that position. Is Guardiola playing a long game with somebody like that and saying, "This is what this player"? So. The Ajax way was Burkamp played right back for three or four games to teach him what the right back was thinking and what the movement was like. So the next time he played, he had a deeper oh, no, understanding. But that's of like it. school by academy football. There's a saying, it's, it's an argument to that in terms of understanding the same positions of player development at a young age. But this is like professional football that we're talking no, about. No, but they, they they get they get better. They get deeper understanding of what they're but trying to do. It takes time. But yeah, but could cost you. Manchester City could have won that game. Played Grealish off the uh, left. Play Foden off the right. Foden, Foden impact the game from anywhere and play Jesus down the middle of the pitch for me give him a stronger chance of winning that game against him they could have won that game I Those agree with you I just I'm trying to get into somehow into Guardiola's season. head to understand what he thinks like, why, why is he doing I don't know these things he's done a time and uh, uh, time again particularly that false uh, number 9 one I don't understand that because some players may just better suit to that position why not play better players who are better suited to that position than others and in form Jesus had just scored the winner against Chelsea the previous week yeah look at uh, Farhan Torres during the week uh, League yeah. Nation the goals he scored he's playing in that Farhan Torres is amazing for Spain yeah but people say like, another false number 9 but I don't, look, the more I look at him I think nine, more, nine. more of a natural number 9 yeah, in terms yeah. of the positions of the runs that he's making stick him in the in, team into the box yeah, yeah. He, but he can't get onto the pitch he's got to look at Jack Grealish kind of zombie walking around in that, in that area of the pitch not understanding the role what he's, what he's expected to do ok Ronaldo to Manchester United out of 10 7.5 Okay, what, why is he getting deducted marks? Well, it was always going to be that uh, quid pro quo, wasn't it? And you can see him, obviously, in terms of... Who's the boss? Sorry? Who's the boss? Is that the quid pro quo? Uh, no, a li- little bit of that, to be honest with you. You can sense a little bit of that bu- bubbling on the, on the surface. He's, sat that, he's not happy to be sat on that bench at any time. He's not happy to be brought off the pitch at any particular time. The best example of that for me was we brought off against young boys at Bern kind of 15 minutes ago. Probably should have been brought off at half-time with the sending off they had that game. And Solskjaer literally like tripping over himself to try and explain himself, apologise him as he was walking down the touchline. That's not a good look for me, like you know what I mean. And they can't have to. I mean, he's a big enough personality in the in the in the dressing room. And the likes of Pogba, Sanchez had a difficult start there. I think you're right. I think but Kenny, he made that speech and nobody had desserts, so therefore it must be a, a winner winner. No, ten okay. out of ten. Winner you know, winner. Be careful with the sprinkling of whatever you put on your chicken and your dinner, sort of thing. Yeah, I think it's fascinating, uh, Manchester United. To be honest, with you. that's it's not going to be a difficult. It's going to be a difficult dressing room to manage if thing, things start to go uh, a little bit skew with during the course of the season. There. Varane to Man United out of ten. Varane. Yeah. Yeah, like eight. Yeah, pretty much as expected. And that first game against Wolves, just like it strikes me as like a like a, a ballerina. The way he kind of moves over the ground, doesn't he? Like he moves on the top of his top of his toes, and it's all a bit uh, seamless. No, I think he's look. He's strengthened the team. Uh, so yeah, uh, good signing for me. Okay, the, he's a little bit injury. His injury profile is not amazing, and he's going to be out for a little while. A couple of weeks, like yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So that's, that doesn't help. No, it's definitely a little kind of asterisk there. Just as as the season goes on, 
will he play 20 games will he play 30 games will he play 40 games there's a big difference you know yeah there is yeah yeah I think he needs to play those 40 games like you're, like you're talking about because there's a, yeah, there's, there's a small soft centre to that uh, Manchester United back four when he doesn't play well, they're back to square one now he's out for a few weeks they, they said so I mean it's, it's yeah, all of a sudden McGuire, Lindelof, well, McGuire's yeah. out as well uh, or possibly yeah. um, so it's, it's going to be very interesting to see if it's just like Groundhog Day for Manchester United. We've got uh, Leicester at 3 o'clock on Saturday for Manchester United, uh, Burnley at 3 o'clock for City on Saturday, and uh, the next one is Jaden Sancho. Why do you make a Jaden Sancho's transfer to Manchester United so far? Yeah, it's been a bit of a struggle for him. Yeah, I wouldn't give up on him. Yeah, I'm a, I watched a lot of him in Germany. He was like, absolutely fantastic, but would be a basic thing to say, but just like a step up in level to a certain extent, maybe even a, a ex, expectation. So he struggled that uh, a little bit. He's found a tough, felt simply for him. We're talking about the young boys, the game uh, when Basaka uh, got sent off. That must have hurt him getting pulled straight away, 35 minutes in. I looked at that. You're not talking about managers, big, uh, big decisions. Oh, I mean, the mentality of the player kind of struggling, going to a new club, struggling a little bit, is real frustration there. You're trying to find a little bit of form. You need minutes on the pitch. 35 minutes into that particular game, sending off, you got to whip somebody out, woof, you get the hook. You know what I mean? Mm. And I just thought in terms of even Solskjaer, woof, he needed to stay on the pitch just in terms of his mindset to keep him in a good place. That would have hurt. No player likes getting the, the fish hook 35 minutes in, regardless of the circumstances. Like, so that was very interesting to me in terms of like him getting hooked there. That wouldn't have helped him. So he's struggling. He is scratched around a little bit for form. Uh, for form. There's no doubt about that. I, mean, I like Sancho, don't get me wrong. And I think they are strengthened with him in the squad. But again, before they signed Sancho, if you'd have said to me, 85 million to spend, where are you going to spend it? Yeah. Centre midfield go big you need a central midfielder because at the time well what about right sided uh, midfielder you got you got Greenwood there you got Greenwood there who could not easily operate it off the right hand side Martial Rashford if you spoke about uh, Cavani there as well Daniel James was still at the football club you know so plenty of options there for me was crying out for uh, that holding midfield it didn't happen they spent the money on Sancho are they stronger because of it Yes, but he needs to play better than he is at the moment, clearly. He may well be a signing for the medium term, but Solskjaer lives in a, every week as a referendum on him. That's the, the situation he finds himself in. So it, like I, I see why you would take the opportunity to buy a player of that quality, but they haven't helped him in his integration. They've picked him in the wrong position a couple of times. and Yeah, see, he's playing so, off the left predominant, isn't he? Most of the time at Dortmund, he played, he played right of a three. You know what I mean? So people, out, out of ten at the moment? Oh, so five and a half, six, Sancho at the moment, yeah. All right. Uh, and Lukaku, how impressed are you by Lukaku's early signs at Chelsea? They've got Brentford on Saturday at half past five, so all the big guns on Saturday. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah hasn't scored a huge amount of late, but he is what he is, uh, Lukaku. It's what it says on the tin, uh, pretty much. You know, when you look at Lukaku, if you look at the types of goals that he scored, if you look at the types of goals that he scored for Milan over the past uh, couple of seasons under Conte, Conte got the very best out of him. But he actually structured, actually built the team around him, even in terms of how Inter Milan uh, played, you know, leaning towards a more a counter-attacking game because it best suited uh, Lukaku in terms of hitting teams in the counter-attack, getting him running down the channels. But if you look at the goals that he scores predominantly, it doesn't overthink things. It's like shift, shot, shift, shot. When he gets into that position, you need that type of Robbie Fowler type finish, a little kind of a uh, bit of a dink or a little bit more of a creative edge. You don't get you don't get that too much uh, from Lukaku, but I still like him. Absolutely, Chelsea are strengthened uh, with him coming into the squad, and he could still make the difference because for me, they're in the shake of Chelsea with Liverpool and Manchester City for that title. Can I run one hot take by you? I mean, we're not on air or anything, so nobody's going to hear this. But uh, <laughs> Timo Werner to break out from here to the end of the season and, and actually go close right. to matching Lukaku goals wise match Lukaku maybe uh, matching Lukaku is an overstatement Owen, Owen yeah. loves him yeah. so I love Werner. Werner. Have a, like, don't say it if it's an overstatement don't, don't um, say it. have a very respectable season as in teams <laughs> oh, he's warring this no, down the teams no, goals wise can. hold on Owen like, keep going <laughs> let me, keep I'm going I'm going to hose, gonna hose it down there your original statement hit the teens with goals in the Premier League this season Timo Werner not to totally stink yeah yeah it'd actually be very good I've been a little bit disappointed, to be honest with you, in terms of his contribution while he's been at the, at the football club. And to mm. be honest with you, if you'd offered me, if somebody had said to Chelsea, say to season, give the money you paid for, I'd have taken it. Newcastle, come on then. Would you, would you like a little bit of Timo Werner action? Come yeah, on. If you see him the last Chelsea game, I mean, way more of a goal threat than... Oh, Lukaku. yeah, yeah let's, forget about the previous, let's forget about the previous tour. Let's just follow well, That's why it's a hot take, Kenny. No, I'm, I'm jumping <laughs> to conclusions based on one game. Now look, I, I, he'll be around the squad and he'll play his, his, fair, his fair share of the games, but it's, it's just his finishing was what let me yeah, out last fair. season. 
Finishing was dreadful. I think with Lukaku, though, you've got to be, be, you've got to be better than that. You've got to be, you've, got to be, you've got to be more clinical than that in terms of where opportunities presented themselves. He looks as if obviously lost his confidence yeah. last year in around the, the kind of penalty box. So I wouldn't give up on him, don't get me wrong. And I think he's a good option to have a, around the squad in terms of the qualities which he has mm. as opposed to other forward players, obviously Lukaku in particular. But Lukaku's going to be the focal point for that attack. And when I, when I think about players who are going to operate, going to link up him around them, I'm thinking about Mount. Pulisic, Zoyek, those type of players. I'm looking at those type of combinations that will naturally work rather than maybe a Lukaku or a Werner, you know, combination up front. So, so no is the answer to my question. That's yeah. fine, Kenny. You know. uh, stupid, last one. Stupid question. Though. Who's your number one <laughs> must-watch Premier League team this season so far? Who's been the most enjoyable team to watch? Uh, oh, yeah. Good question. Do you know what? Villa. I didn't play well last week, to be honest with you. Bit of a drop off, wasn't it? Was Disappointing. It was a because it really felt like the Man United game was a corner turned. And then yeah, like, oh, no, I've watched them a couple of games. They've been really exciting. Really, uh, some uh, very talented uh, forward players. Now the money again invested in the summer because some really uh, uh, strong uh, Watkins, obviously Ings has come in. Uh, Triore. Uh, so yeah, some outstanding talent. Solid. Talking about balance. Now we're talking about Bayern the team early on. That kind of getting that healthy balance in the team, attacking, kind of defending. Nice little balance in that Aston Villa team. Youth as well. A lot of youth energy legs in the team as well. So they're the ones for me. I look at them actually. Uh, quite excited uh, uh, when I when I when I watch them play. They're a good team. They're a good watch. Good watch, Jay. Just like the Republic of Ireland, we've come full circle. Uh, Kenny, good stuff. Keep the blue jersey. Keep. I haven't got one. I don't know. Keep Kenny. Have we got a contact? Can we get one of those? How do you get one of those jerseys? Can you, can you walk into wherever it is? Republic of Ireland captain Zelvery issues. Still? Come and get me. No, they were operating in they town. Were, they were limited edition. edition. They were there was only two thousand of them made. I think. No way. Yeah, that was smart. That they're even hard to get. I'll be amazed. There's not one hanging up in this uh, studio in a week. So I'll be very disappointed. Your uh, connection. Have you pulled? Up, have you burnt all your bridges with the no. association? No. The, the, yeah, no. We had Johnny no. Courtney on the show actually uh, talking about it. <laughs> Uh, it's designed it and made it, yeah. Since it's, uh, since everybody's get me your hands on one, I'll bring it in. If I can get me your hands on one, I'll, I'll bring it in. Don't rule me out. Republic of Ireland captain Kenny Cunningham issues. Come and get me, please, to blue jersey. <laughs> just, just pushing kids out of the way at the front, trying to get uh, Callum Robinson's this jersey the, at the next moment. This is the transfer gossip we all needed. Kenny, good stuff. Kids Thanks a million. Uh, one last question. Paul on YouTube wants to know: Would Roy Keane be in with a shout for the Newcastle gig? That's to you, Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> On that, that note, hanging out, I don't, I don't. on that note, uh, we're going to take a quick break. OT 